Well, good morning and welcome to the Perpetual Equity Investment Company's half-year 2017 investor update presentation. My name is Jeff Lloyd and I'm the CEO and Managing Director of Perpetual Limited and Executive Director of the Perpetual Equity Investment Company, otherwise known to us all by its ASX code as PIC, P-I-C. Today I'm also joined by Vince Pizzullo, who is the Portfolio Manager for PIC. Turning to slide three, you will see the agenda for today's presentation. I'll take you through the company's 2017 half-year results before handing over to Vince, who will then talk in detail about current market conditions, the investment process, and the performance of the company. Please now turn to slide five. The Perpetual Equity Investment Company, or PIC, is an actively managed, highly convicted, listed investment company backed by Perpetual, one of Australia's most respected fund managers. The portfolio has access to high quality Australian and global securities. The company has an objective to deliver a growing income stream and to provide long term capital growth. As mentioned earlier, you'll soon hear from Vince, who manages the fund. Vince has more than 20 years' experience in financial services industry and has extensive domestic and global equity experience. Please now turn to slide six which highlights the strong first half results announced by the company. And as many of you will have already seen, last month PIC announced strong first half result for the 2017 financial year. PIC's operating profit after tax was $22.7 million, up 76% on the corresponding period. Pleasingly, in line with the board's objective to pay a regular and growing dividend to shareholders, the PIC board announced an interim fully frank dividend of 2.2 cents per share. This represents a 175% increase on the first six months of the financial year 16. Now the company aims to grow its dividend prudently and sustainably, with its key objective to deliver a dividend yield that is competitive against the market. I'm pleased to announce that PIC's rolling 12-month dividend yield is now 4.2%, and this equates to 5.9% when grossed to up for franking credits. The PIC portfolio delivered investors regular income and strong growth in the face of unpredictable market conditions. The portfolio performance for the six months to 31 December was 11.2%, outperforming the benchmark by 0.8 of a percent. Now let's turn to slide seven. PIC is the only listed investment company in Australia to release the NTA or net tangible assets per share daily, ensuring that our shareholders always have a current valuation of the investment portfolio. NTA is the best measure to reflect the skill of the manager investing the company's capital. As at 28th of February, the NTA was $1.069 and PIC has delivered consistent growth in the value of the portfolio. Whilst the share price has been stronger in recent months, we recognise the share price has traded as a discount to its NTA. Let's now move to slide eight. Building on a strong rack, track record is crucial. In that regard, the manager continues to diligently manage the portfolio, only investing in stocks that pass perpetual's quality filters. PIC is committed to the proven approach to value investing utilised by Perpetual Investments, one of the most respected fund managers in Australia and provider of market-leading equities, fixed income and multi-asset solutions. Perpetual is an active value manager with a bottom-up investment process, which has been proven over many market cycles. And Perpetual Investments has an enviable track record and loyal clients who value consistency. We are pleased with the strong first half results of the 2017 financial year and to be able to offer investors income and strong growth in the face of unpredictable market conditions. And so with that, I'll now hand over to the portfolio manager, Vince, to provide an update on the portfolio. Thank you, Jeff. If you look at uh, page 10, uh, here we're looking at market conditions as we see it. We're looking at the Ford uh, 
PFEA FX200. As can be seen from the chart, the market is now trading reasonably expensive. Historically, buying at these valuation levels has led to poor future returns. Coupled with uh, what volatility indexes are doing, such as the VIX, now trading at close to 10-year lows, we feel being prudent now will be uh, rewarded with better opportunities at a later date. Now, if we turn to page 11, for the benefit of all new shareholders, we can walk through the investment philosophy that Perpetual has consistently applied for the last 30 years. Quality of business, we assess the industry dynamics, the behaviour of competitors, the ease of entry and exit into the industry, and the returns and risks to those returns. Conservative debt, we focus on companies with a net debt to equity of 50% or less, and companies with even interest cover of three times or greater. Sound management, we speak to all companies we invest in to assess the company's strategy and the ability of management to execute on that strategy and recurring, recurring earnings. Petrol does not invest in companies that do not generate profit or cash flow. We don't invest in thematic stocks or companies that have no history of profit. We will invest in companies that are cyclical though, uh, but we make sure we look through the cycle. Please turn to page 12. We'll look at the third largest investment in the pick called Deutsche Börse. We initiated the position in late October last year this is a financial cyclical. <clears throat> the company is very similar to the ASX, as can be seen, and it still is trading a material discount to the ASX. This has very similar economic drivers to the ASX. The entry point we have provides with the margin of safety and underwrites potential future returns. Now, if we turn to page 13, where we'll review what attracted us to Deutsche Börse. Firstly, the weak share price was driven by concerns surrounding the weak trading and low volatility in asset markets, driven recently by Brexit and the threat of what could be potential future regulation. Also, the ECB has been providing a backstop to certain market participants, which has led to a fall in hedging of risk, which has hurt volumes. We feel this is more a cyclical issue than a structural one. And as we look at the screens, what, what attracts us to businesses like this? Firstly, it's understandable business, as stated earlier, the Deutsche Börse is very similar to the ASX. So it oper operates a cash equities business, which is about 15% of uh, revenue, a futures business, which is about approximately 45% of revenue, a clearinghouse, which is 40% of revenue. This gives us the confidence about what factors drive the business and what it is sensitive to. When you look at the long-term track record, Deutsche Börse has been able to grow both earnings and dividends. While these can be cyclical, with for the market has capitalised the bottom of the cycle returns into the future for Deutsche Börse. When we look at the barriers to entry, exchanges and clearing businesses tend to favour incumbent operators, as liquidity tends to generate more liquidity and favours scale. Therefore, these businesses tend to be natural monopolies, and Deutsche Börse is the leading monopoly in Europe. Deutsche Börse has consistently invested in its core business and has been able to manage its costs based in spite of weaknesses in some of its businesses. This has led to some very strong cash flow generation. Given the fixed cost nature of the business, increased volumes tend to generate increases in sales volume with little to no increase in cost. This tends to generate significant earnings leverage. Finally, since November 2016, we have seen a steady increase in hedging in Europe as risk positions are taken on. This has led to some, what is still volatile volumes, but steadily improving volumes, and this is leading to improving earnings profile. Now, if we turn to page 14, we'll walk through uh, the fundamental research we conduct, mostly around <clears throat> the three issues that we've identified that the market is mostly concerned with. Firstly, macroeconomic risk regarding lower for longer. This affects prospective volumes. Um, secondly, the risk around potential regulatory changes around exchanges and clearinghouse capital. And thirdly, it's more of a cyclical issue rather than a structural issue. That is the, the weakness that we're seeing in the cash equity business. Now, the work we did by numerous meetings with the company, calls to unlisted competitors and industry experts, we've become a lot more comfortable with these issues and feel that they are well and truly priced in the market. Namely that the US economic cycle is already seeing leading indicators improve in Europe since the middle of 2016. We feel this lower for longer risk is particularly priced in, well and truly priced in, and that market sentiment is changing around this factor already. Regulation actually is providing a tailwind to Deutsche Börse. Volumes are increasing on the exchange due to changes in OTC regulations. 
where clearing for derivative price now have to go on exchange. And as a natural housing of liquidity and a clearing house, this tends to favour the incumbent being Deutsche Börse. Also, collateral management uh, favours Deutsche Börse because companies that, so the counterparties or market participants that have multiple products uh, in market want to be able to use one single provider of uh, clearing and trading and hedging so they can maximise the efficiency of their capital base. Now, cash equities, this is still stick, cyclically depressed, we feel, uh, but it is less important driver of future earnings at only 10 to 15% of revenue. So if you look in conclusion, the company continues to trade well below peers on both a relative and absolute basis, and given our entry price, our margin of safety is still intact. What we liked about the business remains, strong and defendable market position, quality management, and a potential cyclical uptick in its core business, which we believe provides with strong earnings leverage. When we purchased Deutsche Börse, we bought into a company on 14 and a half times PE and a 10 times EBIT and a yield of about approximately 4% for what is a natural monopoly and a strong market position. Hopefully this provides some insight into the steps we go through in assessing any potential or current investment in the pick. Now if you could please turn to page 15. We'll just do a look at the, uh, what has worked and what has not worked for the pick this year, uh, first six months. What hasn't worked at this stage, Henderson's Group, um, at this stage under a proposed merger with Janus in the US, it's uh, underperformed the market. It's on about 13 times PE. On a full look-through basis on the merger, if it goes through, uh, you're looking at 11 times PE. It's on a 5.3% fully franked yield. We like the management, the balance sheet's in good condition, and we're, uh, we've increased our weight there. Sky TV at this stage was under a merger with, a uh, potential merger with Vodafone in New Zealand. That has been knocked back. Um, because of that, the stock has underperformed. The fundamentals at this stage are that it's trading on about 12.6 times PE on an 8% yield. Um, our view is that the company now has to sort of transform itself from just a pure pay TV operator into a pay TV telco operator. Um, this has been successfully done offshore in other markets and the management now has to implement a strategy to maximise the benefit of all the work they've done on securing all the content, which they are an exclusive owner of sports content in New Zealand, and fractionalise the cost base to generate earnings growth. The Star Group hasn't worked for the last six months. Uh, our view is, though, on the long term, we like what the business is doing. These are monopolistic-style assets, um, irrespective of Barangaroo being built by uh, Crown Group. Um, the first half was disrupted by um, construction work at the Star Casino in Sydney, as well as construction of a new hotel on the Gold Coast at Jupiter's. We like what they're doing there. They're investing for the future. We can see them with the opening of the new floor and new facilities. They'll be able to actually grow the business going forward. Again, it's a company we're looking for where the company will be able to grow the dividend over time greater than uh, 5% or greater than inflation, uh, whereas we're trying to avoid companies which, at this stage, have been paying out all of their earnings. Because um, at some point, uh, you have to invest for the future to be able to maintain dividend growth. Now, what has worked on the other side of the uh, slide there, BlueScope, we've taken some profit on BlueScope, uh, was a material contributor over the last six months and actually over the last two years. The multiples on the stock are still 11 times PE, um, doesn't pay a dividend at this stage, but uh, we've actually reduced position. Secondly, Bank of America, it's trading on 14.5 times uh, yield, uh, sorry, PE, a 1.2% dividend yield. We like what the company is doing. It is leveraged to a US rate cycle. Uh, credit growth in the US is steadily improving. Uh, they're a fully funded deposit bank on their mortgage book, um, and it's well positioned. It's still trading at book value. Uh, most Australian banks are trading at 1.5 to 2.2 times book value, so we still see a lot of value there. Royal Phillips worked. Um, it's on about 16 times PE now on a 2.7% dividend yield. Uh, the business, we, the original position in the business was that the, the company was going to deconglomerise. They did that. They spun out part of their lighting business. Uh, they've been investing in their health technologies business, and they've got a fantastic consumer health business as well. Uh, they're paying off debt. And we still think the stock looks reasonable value here. SIO Global, well, uh, the company was taken over. Um, we received a 30% premium for our stake. 
Um, and we reinvested that back into uh, some other positions, newer positions. Woolworths, again, it's pretty topical. It's the largest position in the pick. Um, we still like it. The company's doing exactly what their stated strategy is, which gives us confidence that uh, they're not going to deviate from the strategy, which we think will create fair value or significant value for the shareholders. While the stock's on 20 times PE, we think they are significantly under-earning on the assets they have today. Um, and that we think that they'll be able to grow the dividend materially over the next few years. Please turn to slide 16. We'll just go through the position in the portfolio that stands today. On the top five Australian securities, we've got Woolworths, which I mentioned. Clivesdale Bank, we've been increasing our position there. Uh, we like Clivesdale Bank. It's got UK, UK exposure and cheap pound exposure. We like the fact that the earnings growth is pretty much almost driven internally by our uh, self-help, reducing the cost base and getting the cost to income uh, ratio down. Medibank Private, it's a newish position. We put the significant position below $2.50. We like the industry. Uh, we back management to improve the operating metrics in the business and become a lot more efficient, but more importantly, improve the customer experience uh, to reverse the customer losses they've seen over the last two years. Sky TV I've uh, covered before, and Suncorp Group, it's on about 14 times at 5.3% uh, fully frank yield. We like where the business is positioned. We like the companies focusing on, uh, on removing costs out of the business. Um, a fairly efficient operator and management, and the, particularly in the general insurance business, the short tail book, we kind of like the industry structure there. Top three global positions, as stated earlier, Deutsche Börse remains our largest over, uh, offshore overweight. Icon, PLC, um, the global healthcare business, it is a um, clinical trial operator. Uh, I mentioned that on the last uh, four year results. Still like it's on about 16 times PE, it's got zero debt. Uh, it's generating about 10% EPS growth at this stage, so we're keeping the faith there. We think the stock's materially undervalued at this stage, and I mentioned Bank of America before. You just flip over to the next page, page 17, to see the uh, asset allocation. At this stage, we're sitting at Aussie, Australian equities at 63% of the portfolio. Global securities at 13%, and we've been raising cash up to 24% of, uh, of the strategy at this stage. At this stage, we're maintaining this cash weight. As mentioned earlier, we're struggling to see any real absolute value in markets. Um, we will use the cash opportunistically to take advantage of any market dislocation, uh, and we'll be moving pretty aggressively when that occurs. And just turning over to the final part of the slide, page, uh, slide 18. Just looking at the company's performance uh, relative to the benchmark. Uh, the last six months has been reasonably good for the company. Um, as I mentioned before, some of our global positioning has actually added a lot of value over the last six months. On a 12-month basis, we have struggled a bit. I think the cash has probably been a bit of a drag at this point. Um, but we still uh, believe that being patient and focusing on quality and value will deliver long-term performance. At this point, we'll hand back to Jeff. Well, thank you, Vince. It's always great to hear about the professionalism of our team and the investment process at Perpetual in action. So now, before we wrap up, slide 20, 21, and 22, are just a reminder of shareholder services that are available, including key information for both the registry and access to Perpetual Investments. The company aims to keep our shareholders informed with a number of excellent services, and I encourage you to take a look through PIC's refreshed website. The new site was designed to ensure shareholders have access to a flexible and easy-to-navigate platform that provides better access to key news and insights content, videos, and other fund information. The daily NTA will, of course, continue to be published on this new website. Shareholders and prospective shareholders also have access to monthly emails and other media content. And all this builds on the existing information we make available, including the daily NTA announcements, monthly emails, media content, national presentations and roundtables to provide you excellent services as an investor. This information can be found on the new website, which I again encourage you all to take a look at. Before I hand back to the operator to open for questions, I'd like to again highlight how pleased we are to announce a strong 
first half for this financial year. The company is, of course, backed by one of Australia's most respected fund managers, and we will continue to aim to deliver long-term capital growth and regular income for our investors. Thank you very much for your participation today.